Welcome to Teaching Tips for AP Biology. I'm Joy Killo. This video represents an introductory activity for natural selection, population genetics, and Hardy Weinberg. I like to generate interest as the students enter the classroom by having this slide on the screen and materials available to make a headband. Have a model near the supplies and one on your head. Everyone starts with a green strip and a blue strip. The colored strips can be cut from construction paper or foam if you want them to be more durable. Any long strip of paper works for the band. Tape it to fit and cut slits to hold the colored strips. Engage the students in the topic of evolution by humanizing its key figure, Charles Darwin. I like to read from his autobiography. I saw two rare beetles and seized one in each hand. Then I saw a third, a new kind, which I could not bear to lose so that I popped the one which I held in my right hand into my mouth. Alas, it ejected some intensely acrid fluid, which burnt my tongue, so that I was forced to spit the beetle out, which was lost, as well as the third one. What do students already know? Hold a conversation. Tape poster paper to the wall and label a continuum. Enlarge print and separate these terms in advance. Survey the class for each term. How much do you know about evolution? Walk along the continuum as students raise hands to reflect their degree of knowledge. Tape terms to the paper at the point that represents the most common response. Let students discuss what they think the strips represent, first in small groups, then as a class, to make sure they understand that this is a model representing two forms of an allele and that you can represent different things like heterozygous and homozygous. Have pairs discuss these terms, then join a second group to compare their answers. Here are some important terms for your reference. Students could check their ideas with these terms as well. Have a student come to the board and show that they could calculate allele frequency for the room. This makes sure everyone has the same understanding. Record your starting allele frequencies in a table like this. In Hardy-Weinberg, we use the letter P for the dominant form and Q for the recessive form of the allele. The alleles represent two different movement styles. Blue is an allele for prancing and green for sliding. Demonstrate these two phenotypes with a quick prance or a slow sliding walk. Let students work through the slide questions in groups. Then in your debrief make sure that they mentioned homozygous, heterozygous, dominant, recessive, and use them correctly. Give the students some time to think about what they're doing by letting them work through these prompts in groups. If needed, scaffold with suggestions to look at meiosis. This is a good place to let students demonstrate their modeling to others. Students model meiosis by doubling their genes and placing them in the gene pool container. Mix and redraw to create offspring. This is a good place to discuss random mating. After all students draw, dramatically empty the gene pool container. Ask students, where is the gene pool now? What happened to the genes that were not selected? This emphasizes to students that the genes are in the population. Calculate frequency after each draw, then record the frequencies for the next generation on the table you made. To model selection, a teacher or student will play a hawk. A tap on the shoulder from the hawk means the student did not survive to reproduce. Remind the students to exercise reasonable limits on their efforts to evade the hawk. No, hand, no hanging from the chandeliers. Set territory boundaries and walk about tapping mostly sliders to emphasize the role of natural selection. One nice thing about this game is that the students that are tapped are only out briefly. They rejoin the game immediately with the next draw. Repeat the, ac the actions on this slide for each generation. Survivors double their alleles, add them to the gene pool, and all students redraw a pair of alleles, calculating the new P and Q, and then applying natural selection with the hawk again. Recording the P and Q from each generation in a chart like this. After running this scenario for several generations, let the students step back and reflect on what they predicted and what actually happened. 
Give them a chance to consider what might have shifted this frequency. Let the students find the list for the Hardy-Weinberg conditions and compare it to the one they developed. This list is for you to refer to after the students have developed, confirmed, and compared their own list of why allele frequencies might change. Now for the really fun part. Divide the class into groups and have each group take one of the unmodeled conditions and develop their own model. They will share the model with the class, explaining and supporting their procedure and then using it to collect data. Let the students write about this in their journal. Allow some peer discussion first as a mean of, means of scaffolding this activity. Students will see that there are some Hardy-Weinberg conditions that can never be met. For instance, mutation is a random event. It cannot be prevented. Working through this themselves, they should grapple with the purpose of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. You may need to help them see that it provides a standard against which we can measure change. You can extend your model to include artificial selection. Let the students consider the case of artificial selection and how they could model it with the materials and the procedures they just used. This Quizlet can be used to review in class or at home. You can make flashcards. You could do quizzes. Assess the student growth by reprising the poster you used at the beginning of the lesson. Compare the list to the original to assess student growth. Before you put this lesson away, reflect as a teacher. Did the students master the objectives? Do you feel better about student-centered learning? Make notes about lesson challenges for next year. Were you happy with your assessment? Is there something else you would add? I hope this lesson is useful. Until next time, this was a teaching tip for AP Biology.